Welcome fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic 90s nerds to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between. Today, however, we're once again doing another vlog. I actually just this past weekend went to Memphis, Tennessee. So I will take you along with me on my journey to Memphis, Tennessee, where you will see what I do there. But I also document what I read along the way on the drive there and back. And I also documented some things I watched from my old school April Watchathon, where I watched things from 2002 or earlier. I'm doing the same thing with my reading where I read books from 2002 and earlier. It's a whole big extravaganza called Old School April. This vlog is kind of in that vein, but it's also a travel vlog and a little bit of a book shopping vlog because I went to bookstores and just random places along the way on the drive to Memphis. So you will get to see all of that and what I did when I came home as well. And so at the very end of this video, stay tuned because yes, there will be a book haul. One of my favorite things ever to do is film a book haul. So you guys will get to see that. And without further ado, let's go to the short intro. And when we come back, you'll see my travel clips. All right, guys, see you in a second. Bagels, cinnamon crunch.
It's my favorite part. <laughs> Give us luck, bitch! Hook, 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 And fellow freaks and geeks and nostalgic 90s nerds or nostalgic 80s nerds or nostalgic 70s nerds, whatever decade you're nostalgic for, hello again. I am checking in. I got home yesterday. We went on the trip to Memphis. I showed you guys some clips of me book shopping. I showed you clips of me flipping eating and drinking beer, baby. So yeah, the beer was great. Uh, lots of good beer, that's for sure. And I'm just gonna check in real quick, tell you what I've been reading, tell you what I've been watching, and tell you what I'm going to watch next. In fact, I've got to pull up. If you see changing pictures, it's because I've got my computer up and the screensaver comes on sometimes. All right, so what I've been reading. I actually shot a few clips of me reading Ritual in the car as we drove to Memphis and drove back. Ritual is by Graham Masterton. Also, it is my book club pick for my YouTube channel. The Midnight Book Society is the name of our club. So we are currently reading that. My hair is wet, by the way, because I just showered, so I'm sorry about that. Also, I am wearing an old school shirt. I dream of beanies, like beanie babies. It's all ripped up and very old looking because it is actually very old, period. It is actually from legit the 90s. I think it was really huge on me. I think I got it at like nine or 10, maybe even younger than that. So I still have it, but it is kind of falling apart. As you can see here, there's like little tears. No, I don't want it to fall apart. I might take it off after this because the more I think about it, I'm like, I probably should not wash this like again. So maybe I shouldn't wear it extensively at all. But anyway, back to ritual. So I'm about 150 pages away from finishing ritual. As I said, it's also known under the name Feast. It is kind of about these cannibals who are undercover, really, as a restaurant society, like a dining society. However, a lot of people in power know about the society, and yet it still goes on and isn't really interrupted or hindered. Well, this restaurant inspector's son, they're traveling around the country together, you know, eating, taking a little father-son trip, but they're not very close. They haven't spent a lot of time together. So their, their tensions are kind of high. They're not getting along. And the son, whose name is Martin, is kind of finding out about this cult, this religious cannibalistic cult that refers to themselves as a society, as I said, a restaurant society. And he gets sucked in. And so the restauranteur has to freaking find out what is going on? His name is Charlie. So Charlie has to try to save his son, essentially, is the premise. And that's not giving anything away. If you read the back of the book, it says all of this. And it's just, you know, going and going. New Orleans is involved in the plot. Who knew? I am from New Orleans. And the last couple books I've read have had things to do with New Orleans. Specifically, the one that comes to mind is I read last month in March Poppy Z. Bright's book, Exquisite Corpse. And that had a huge, huge part of it taking place in New Orleans. So in this book, New Orleans is mentioned again. And I'm like, what is the deal with old school horror lately and New Orleans? And the book over my head, come on, point, Halo also takes place in New Orleans and also other parts of Louisiana. And so I thought that was kind of cool. I've read these books and they all have something to do with New Orleans and I'm from New Orleans. I'm like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. It was an accident, but it's very thematic for me personally. So yeah, I can't tell you what I'm going to rate it yet because obviously I haven't even gotten to the crescendo of the story yet and to the biggest part of the story where we get like a lot of action, I'm assuming. So yeah, right now I'm still just making my way through. I do think, and I think it's safe to say that I technically think it could be shorter because it has felt like a very slow read compared to some of my other reads, especially last month in March. I had so many great reads that felt quick and fast and all of this, whereas this one... Is kind of feeling a little slow. Not terrible. There's some really gruesome parts, but not as many as I thought, by the way. But anyway, Will Erickson, who co-wrote Paperbacks from Hell, actually commented on one of my Instagram photos where I showed the book. He said it read more like a thriller, and I could see what he means, and I kind of agree with what he meant by that. It's not reading like, you know, extreme horror. Like, I thought 
I heard cannibals in the description or saw or read cannibals in the description. I didn't hear it. I, I heard cannibals. No, I <laughs> saw the word cannibals in the description and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be gruesome and gory. And it hasn't been to the level I was expecting. Again, that's my own expectations and judgments that I made and preconceived notions. And that's my fault, really. But anyway, we will see what I think when I finish it. But those are my thoughts as of right now. I am going to tell you that I think I'm going to throw in another book. I'm going to start reading this very, very soon. If not tonight, then definitely this week. I'm going to start reading. This is an Are You For The Dark book, and it's called The Tale of the Souvenir Shop. Very rough copy. This is a reading copy, so do not judge my copy, even though... It is terrible looking, I will admit. So yes, I'm going to read this kind of soonish. Definitely this week. I'll start it at some point. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm going to wrap this up either tonight or tomorrow, this whole vlog, with my book haul from out of town when I went to all those bookstores that I showed you guys clips from. So I will do that before we close out. But I just wanted to update you guys what I've been watching. So... I just recently watched today How the West Was Fun, which is an Olsen Twins movie. So I'm looking at my list over here. That's why I'm glancing off to the side. It's on my monitor. I've told you guys this before, but if you're new viewers, I use this program or website, whatever, called Tracked.tv, T-R-A-K-T dot tv and i use that to make a list of like tv show episodes along with movies and you could put it all in a list and i think that's so helpful and awesome so i've got everything i want to watch for my whole old school april watchathon in this list so what i watched today how the west was fun with the olsen twins that was so good i also last night watched hook after we got back home from out of town i also got to watch welcome to camp nightmare which is an episode of goosebumps it's actually a two-parter episode so yeah that was fun and I watched the Disney movie My Date with the President's Daughter, which is almost impossible to find. But my good friend Ashley sent me a link to it on YouTube. So someone uploaded it, of course, like illegally, to YouTube. Thank you, Ashley. I was able to watch it. Not the greatest quality, but it didn't matter to me. And oh my god, it was so nostalgic and it was so wonderful and it was so good. I've also been watching Boy Meets World and Doug. And I watched the animated movie Once Upon the... Once, not the forest, once upon a forest recently, I watched the first five episodes of the TV show Gargoyles, and that was marvelous as well. Just really enjoying so many watches recently, and I'm going to do a whole wrap up in May about everything I watched in April, so I don't want to go into depth or great detail about what I've just watched because I'll actually talk about it in the what I watched video because I've been taking notes more notes than I do when I read books which is funny who does that me I guess so yes I've got a notebook right now I'm taking movie notes I somehow have not been taking book notes but whatever I still the book stuff is in here like I understand what I you know feel about the books and I can remember that a lot easier whereas even these movies even though I've seen them a billion times for some reason there are little things that I want to remember and won't remember later if I don't write them down so that's why but anyway guys I'm gonna wrap up this clip I'm gonna watch some more stuff another thing I watched today or part of it I didn't watch the whole thing I watched the NSYNC Disney Channel concert called In Concert with NSYNC. I watched part of that, which is available on YouTube right now, also illegally. And I watched that while I worked out today. So yes, and that's why my hair is wet because I just worked out and then I showered. I'm making dinner right now. So I'm going to go continue with that. Later on, I don't know what I'm going to watch tonight. I might just read a little bit and try to make more headway on ritual. We will see, but I'll catch up with you guys in the next couple clips and I will do a little book haul. So that's something to look forward to and I'll see you then. making funfetti cupcakes instead of Dunkaroos icing. Guess what? Nickelodeon cupcake paper protectors or whatever. Look! Very thematic. Reptar, Tommy, Spunky! So, got water droplets on here after I washed it.
and it is the next day. Last night you saw me making some freaking Funfetti cupcakes. My original plan when I bought the box of Funfetti was to make Dunkaroos, not icing, which I accidentally said in the clip, but Dunkaroos ice cream. And part of the ingredients said to use Funfetti cake mix. So I had this Funfetti cake mix and I was like, I'm just going to make Funfetti flipping cupcakes. So that's what I did. We barely had any icing left because we were eating some with Teddy Grahams instead of ever making the Dunkaroos ice cream, which we used all the ingredients for different things just to eat for fun. So anyway, I made that last night and I honestly really loved it. Uh, I had two cupcakes last night. So again, today I'm just going to show you guys what I hauled when I was out of town. We went to two bookstores and one like used thrift store type of thing called Nuts. Didn't find anything there, but I had fun looking at their VHS collection that were, you know, obviously the VHSs were for sale. And also at the first bookstore, I found one thing, but I don't even have it here. It was just a random hardcover book. Not, you know, the greatest selection there. But at the Goodwill, the third place we went to, I found a lot of middle grade stuff that just is really fun. And some young adult stuff. And one, you saw in the vlog earlier, one old school vintage book that, and it's an adult book, that is like one of my dream finds. And it's not like super valuable, but I've been looking for it for a long, long time. And it's because I'm obsessed with orcas. So you guys saw me freak out over Finding Killer. And it wasn't even in the horror section. It was just, and it's not even labeled as horror, by the way, published by Signet. It's labeled as just nothing. Just it was in general fiction. I was browsing, 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 looking at the spines and I see killer and I'm like, oh my God, no. I've been looking for this for like over a year now. So very excited. I love orcas in a way. They're also dicks <laughs> in another way. <laughs> like when they eat, it's really terrible. Like how they chase their prey and stuff and they almost play around with their prey. I don't like that at all, but they're very beautiful animals. And I do love the movie Free Willy. Just going to plug it one more time. I have a two hour chat about Free Willy, but I also talk about the movie Blackfish, which is about, you know, orcas in captivity versus in the wild and why it's a bad idea to keep them in that captivity, by the way. Also, I talked about the um, movie the story behind Keiko, it's not exactly called that, but it's about the whale who played Free Willy, and I talked about some other orca-themed movies in that stream. Very proud of that, and it fits with this old-school April readathon and watchathon I'm currently doing, which is all about watching old-school things and reading old-school things from 2002 and earlier. So if you're into that and you want to watch Free Willy and then go check out my stream, I do recommend it because I put like over a month's worth of work into that video. And yes, that is one of the reasons why I was super excited to get Killer by Peter Tonkin. This is featured in Paperbacks from Hell along with another book called Orca. I'm also looking for that one. I have not found that yet. I want to read this, but I'm scared because it's actually in really decent condition. So as I told you guys, it was published by Signet. This is a first printing and it is from 1980. So yes, very exciting. I'm so pumped to have this. I would love to find a hardcover copy of this one day because that is what is super valuable actually are the hardcover copies of this book. And the covers are really cool too. But anyway, that's enough about this book. I've already spent like many minutes on this book, but yes, I'm so happy. This is kind of like the star gem find of the whole thing. Once I found this, I was like, okay, I guess everything's worth it because I found this. So yes, hello, I love you. I'm very excited about it. So not a lot of this is horror. A lot of it's just, you know, vintage middle grade that's kind of fun and nostalgic. I love Growing Pains, the show. And so here we have a Growing Pains novelization. Another book you guys saw me discover in the book shopping vlog section of my vlog is this book, Tune In Anytime by Caroline B. Cooney. And guess what? It is signed, as you could see. Very cool. Intrigue, suspense, romance, evil schemers, innocent victims, and true love. Is it a TV soap opera? Not exactly. Next up, I bought a copy of The Never Ending Story. I'm actually going to watch this movie as part of my old school April Watchathon very soon. I'm actually about to start another vlog upcoming on this weekend. Today's only Wednesday, but when we get into the weekend, I'm going to do a whole 80s themed vlog where I watch like all these 80s movies that are on my list for old school April. So I'm very excited about it. It's going to be so much fun. But yes, Never Ending Story is one of those movies I'm going to be watching along with a whole bunch of other fun things. 
but uh i am super excited to own this it was you know it's not vintage or anything this copy i just really wanted a copy to eventually read and it's very long though but still i'm really curious to see how the book is compared to the movie and i heard this is really really good so one day i can get to it because now i own it so yes this is basically just to read i picked it up and i was like oh why not support a goodwill store and it was super cheap like everything there was like 150 or 149 because this one literally says 149 some things were 199 it was wonderful very cheap stuff Another book I bought, Fatal Secrets by Richie Tankersley Kuzik. And guess what? This is just to read. This is a library edition, nice little hardcover. And the reason I bought this is because I have a perfect copy in paperback and I do not want to mess it up, but I do want to read it. So when it's time to read it, I could read this nice sturdy copy and not have to worry about creasing up one of my few books that doesn't really have spine creases or anything. So yes, you're safe. I'm pointing over there because that's where it is. You're safe, paperback. And this one will be the one I read. And I'm very excited to, to have that option. And this was so cheap. So I said, why not? Here's another book I bought. This is an old school young adult book. And I bought it because I could have sworn I heard people talk about this as being a great read. This is Are You in the House Alone by Richard Peck. And I think who I heard it from this seems like typical that I would have heard it from him. I think I heard about this book from Library Macabre, aka Cameron Chaney. So I will link his channel below. I could have sworn I heard him talk about this at some point a long time ago in one of his videos. But yes, I was like, hmm, I think I remember him saying it was good. So cheap. I picked it up and I'm always up for a good old school young adult read. So here we are. That's why I have it. Also, it's got the old school dyed blue pages. Another nostalgic novelization. This is Casper, the junior novelization, and I love Casper. It's so much fun. And there's actual photographs from the movie inside, and this is a first printing. And look at how cool this is on the copyright page. Got illustrations, and there's other illustrations. Not only the color photographs, but the illustrations throughout, which are really cute. Like, look at that, look at that. So adorable. And yes, here we are. Movie photos. So here we have the bad guys. I don't know if you guys can see very well. That right there is Eric Idle, and he is a member or was a member of Monty Python. Obviously, Monty Python is not together anymore. A wonderful British comedy troupe that I used to be obsessed with when I was in middle school. I actually did Monty Python skits for our talent show at a Catholic frickin' middle school. Somehow they let me. They approved it. And all the adults afterwards were like, oh my god, we loved Monty Python. Like, you know, when we were growing up, I can't believe you, like, did a skit, like, about Monty Python. And they were all like, <laughs> for some reason always got so along so well with like adults like and parents and stuff it's ridiculous but maybe because I like the same things as them a lot of times so yeah they love that and I am a fan of Eric Idle and Monty Python in general so the Holy Grail is a great movie but there's a lot of great things like Monty Python live at the Hollywood Bowl if you haven't watched any Monty Python that was like one of the first things I watched maybe I watched Holy Grail first but live at the Hollywood Bowl is really really good and it's got it's got their best skits from their TV show but like live on stage and it's wonderful it's so good okay we've got a few more and a lot of these remind me of Cameron actually because it's books that I think he would love and I just could not pass them up and I'm so excited to read them and to own them so first up Betsy Haynes boy talk and it's not in perfect condition at all in fact it's got like a library label on the side but I don't care this is sneaking around I'm sorry about the lighting it's really uh hard to get the lighting right right now it's in the morning but yeah fantastic just look at their clothes and the whole like nostalgic room romance dating friendship totally confidential absolutely free ask for help with your boy problems give advice and be a best friend to someone else all you need is a touch tone phone call boy talk after school monday through friday through 30 to 4 30. Boy Talk's first call is from Sneaking Around, whose new boyfriend wants to keep their relationship a secret. So why is Joni scheming? She has a sneaking suspicion that her own boyfriend may be sneaking around. New beau. Oh my god, sounds incredible. <laughs> this is only the fourth book, and it is a first printing. 
wonderful. Just so marvelous. And just like the colors and everything. All right, the next one, similar to that type of book, The Party Line, Rosie's Popularity Plan. And it's a series of books, it looks like. This is number four. Look, it's a balloon. And that's the number of the book. And again, look at the clothes. So nostalgic. This is wonderful. By Carrie Austin. This was published in 1990. And it is a first printing as well. Can a secret friendship, a magic makeover, and a surprise party save the day? You bet they can, especially when the party line's in on it. Get on the party line. Meet Rosie, Becky, Allie, and Julie in this fun-filled series about friendship growing up and having a good time. I'm going to have a good time reading this, so yes, thank you. I'm so happy to have found it. Here we have The Case of the Horrible Swamp Monster by Drew Stevenson. And look at this fantastic cover. They're like, ah, oh, there's something behind us, I think. Ah. This kid's like, whatevs. I <laughs> just love it. So, oh, they go to a spooky lost swamp to film a monster movie. They don't expect to find a real monster. Oh, I love that. So they're like filming a little movie. It reminds me of the pilot of Dawson's Creek, where he is filming a like swamp monster type of movie, like Creature from the Black Lagoon type of thing. And, um... Yeah, then they don't find a real monster, but just drama ensues. Teenage drama. I love Dawson's Creek, by the way, in case you guys didn't know. That's why these old school, like, teenage books and old school middle grader right up my alley. I love stuff like that. All right, so this is wonderful. It's a minstrel book, and it's darling. All right, let's look at the publish date. It was published in 1987, so yay! I'm so happy to have this. And next up, this one's really cool. And it has to do with Alfred Hitchcock. And I have a couple of Alfred Hitchcock mystery books. So this is Alfred Hitchcock and the Three Investigators. So the mystery Alfred Hitchcock books I have are adult books. This looks to be a vintage middle grade book. So this is The Secret of the Phantom Lake. And it must have been a series of these three investigators with Alfred Hitchcock. Let me show you the cover. From their hideaway in the Jones salvage yard, the three investigators sally forth to foil the most clever villains and unravel the darkest of riddles. But now comes a riddle more than a hundred years old. Can even our formidable trio solve it? Can the stubborn trio solve a message from the dead and find the secret of the Phantom Lake? And if they do, can they find it in time? We shall see. And it's signed, Alfred Hitchcock. All right, last and certainly not least, I could have sworn I saw Cameron haul this on his Patreon recently. By the way, if you're not subscribed to his Patreon or joined in, whatever you want to call it, you should be. It's totally worth the money. He puts up videos all the time of all these awesome book haul hauls that no one gets to see if they're just subscribed to his channel. You've got to be a Patreon to see all these great book hauls. And I could have sworn he hauled this, but I don't remember. And if he didn't, then I feel like I need to give him this book. But I'm pretty sure he hauled it already, so he already owns it. But yes, I found this Sweet Valley Twins super chiller book called Evil Elizabeth. And the reason I think I remember him hauling it, because he said it was like a ripoff of The Haunted Mask, and the back does seem like it's about The Haunted Mask. And I thought it'd be perfect to end the haul with this, because I just read The Haunted Mask in my first April vlog, which was all about my readathon and watchathon old school April I've, as I've been talking about this whole haul and kind of been showing you stuff that I'm doing to celebrate the readathon and watchathon throughout this vlog but mostly it's been travel but still I thought it'd be perfect since I just read The Haunted Mask to end with kind of like a Haunted Mask ripoff spoof homage whatever you want to call it but yes Evil Elizabeth and it's awesome because yes it's like a die cut cover so here we've got this wonderful fantastic evil looking mask face and then we've got she looks mad there very mad so it says here elizabeth found the scariest halloween mask and it's turning her into a monster so hell yeah hell yeah evil elizabeth who's afraid of elizabeth everyone thinks of elizabeth as the nice twin that's why she loves her halloween mask it's so scary that no one can believe she is behind it but her appearance isn't the only thing that changes 
when Elizabeth puts on the mask, little by little it makes her act evil. Only Elizabeth doesn't know it. It's up to her twin sister Jessica to destroy the mask before Elizabeth does something she'll regret. Forever. 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 Going into a different nostalgic quote from Sandlot, of course, forever. But yes, I am so pumped to have this. This is a first printing. And this was published in... Where are you, bitch? 1995. Very cool. Very, very cool. Very happy to have it. All right, guys. I know this last part has been long, but overall this video is mostly short because I've actually already started editing it, so it's not that long. All right, guys, that's all I have for you guys. But as I mentioned, stay tuned because more vlogs are coming. I originally planned to do a lot of other videos like top tens and top videos and just special thematic videos for this month. However, I've been having a lot of fun vlogging and I just think it goes with what I'm doing this month. So I'm gonna stick with the vlogs and I'm gonna save the video ideas I have for like next year when I do this readathon and watchathon again, or maybe before Halloween time, because some of the videos would fit before then too. It'll be thematic. Anyway, hope you like vlogs because there's a lot more to come. So for this time, as I said, that's it for me. Till next time, you guys know what you can do. Keep on killing it. Bye guys. Thank you for watching.